Okay, this is the last video in this section about graphing quadratic functions. So in this example, we have f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 10x minus 28. And this is all of the information that we want to find out about this function. Okay, so as we've talked about in previous videos, let's start with the easy pieces first. Uh, the domain. We already know that the domain for any polynomial function, in particular a quadratic function, is going to be all real numbers. So we can go ahead and say from negative infinity to infinity. That much we know. We can also talk about the y-intercept because we know it's going to be an ordered pair, zero, comma, something. And we just have to look up here. If I plug in zero, that guy's gone, this guy's gone, and we're left with negative 28. Now, this is a crazy big y-intercept, so we know that we're not going to see this guy on our little graphing grids <clears throat> that we're used to working with. All right, so we can go ahead and talk about the vertex, or we can try to go for the x-intercept. It doesn't really, really matter which one you want to go for. So let's start with that. Um, let's start with the vertex. So the vertex formula, just to make sure that we remember, so to find the vertex when you are in this standard form, this general form, the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. We already talked about where that guy comes from. And the y-coordinate is just plugging in what you get from negative b over 2a into your function. All right. So let's, let's look at that. So x is equal to negative b over 2a. This is going to be kind of crazy because we have a bunch of negatives running around. So this is negative fraction. B is this guy right here, so that's negative 10. Over 2 times A, A is negative 1. So it's just a matter of cleaning this up a little bit. You just have this one negative, so let's just go ahead and apply that to the numerator. Negative times negative is positive 10 over negative 2, and we come up with negative 5. All right, so right now that we have x equals negative 5, we can go ahead and start filling in certain blanks. That means for our vertex, the first coordinate is negative 5, and then we'll have to figure out what the y-coordinate is simply by plugging negative 5 into our function. Your axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. It's that vertical line that goes through the vertex, which means it's going to be x equals and then whatever the x-coordinate is. All right, so now we need to find the other half of that vertex. So let's do this. Let's evaluate f of negative 5. Okay. So make sure that you're using parentheses whenever you substitute. Be very, very careful about all of your signs. So it's minus 10 parentheses. We're replacing that with negative 5 minus 28. All right, so first things first, uh, this means negative times the result of negative 5 squared, so that's 25. And let's just bring this down right now. So the first thing we did was to take care of and address the powers. So now we get negative 25. Negative 10 times negative 5 is positive 50 and then minus 28. And we just need to combine all of this. So negative 25 plus 50 is positive 25, and positive 25 minus 28 is negative 3. So my vertex is the ordered pair negative 5, negative 3. Okay? And now to find the x-intercepts, this is where we take our function, we take negative x squared minus 10x minus 28 and we set this equation, we set that function equal to 0 and we solve that. Alright, so let's see how we're going to do this. Well, first of all, I don't really like that we have a leadoff negative here, so let's, let's take care of that. And the easy way to do that is just to divide everything here by negative 1. 
And so now we have positive x squared plus 10x plus 28 is equal to 0. Now it looks a little bit better for us in terms of solving a quadratic equation. So let's go through our progressions. Uh, first, can I use the square root property? The answer is no, because I have two terms that contain x. All right, uh, then we try to factor. Can we find factors of 28 that add to 11? No, we get close with 4 and 7, but they don't add to give me 10. All right, so factoring doesn't work. We need to do or try completing the square. Remember, completing the square is great when you have a lead coefficient of 1, which we do have, and you want the middle coefficient to be even. We have that too. So completing the square is really going to be the best and easiest guy, the easiest method for us uh, to solve this quadratic equation. So we're going to move the 28 to the other side, so it's minus 28. And then we're going to complete the square. So with completing the square, I know this is going to be something squared. And to figure out what goes in the gap here, I do half of 10. So that's 5 that goes in the factored form. And then 5 squared is what goes in the gap. 25 is what completes the square. But again, as we've mentioned many, many times, uh, in order to get this, we already know what the factorization is going to be. So let's do that all together. If I add 25 on the left, I must add 25 on the right. Like this. So this gives me negative 3. And now I use my trusty blue pen to apply the square root property on both sides. Of course, we can't forget the plus or minus. And so now we have x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus, wait a minute, this gives me i times the square root of 3. And when I finish getting x by itself, negative 5 plus or minus i square root of 3. So we have imaginary solutions to the quadratic equation, which means that for our x-intercepts, we don't have any. Now, before I even go through this whole process of completing the square and solving this guy, here's something that I should have already known. If we were to do a quick sketch of this, just to get an idea about where things are located, my vertex is at negative 5, negative 3, so it's right here. And since I would have a negative, so I have a negative leading coefficient, that tells me that the orientation for my parabola is not opening up. And so that's going to be opening down. So if I'm just doing a quick sketch to get an idea about what's going on, I know that I'm going to have a parabola that looks like that. Now, that is not accurate. It's just a quick sketch. And since it's opening down, we see that there's no way for this for this graph to cross the x-axis. So even without completing the square, we should have known uh, there's, there's no solution. There are no x-intercepts. All right, now using this quick little picture, let's find the range. So our range is going to be bottom to top. So we stop right here at a y value of negative 3. So that tells me that my range, here we go, my range is going to be from negative infinity, and it goes up to and includes the y value of negative 3. Now the other part of this, I added a couple of things that we haven't had in the last couple of videos, which was talking about the intervals over which your function is increasing or decreasing. So when we talk about increasing, that means as you go from left to right, you're going to be going up. Decreasing naturally means you're going to be going down from left to right. So when I look at this picture, we see that for part of it, it's as you trace, trace with your finger going from left to right, this guy's going up, and then it goes down. So he goes up, so that means right here, if I could just cut this guy right here, we see that he is increasing on the left side, and then on the right side he is decreasing. Now be careful. I don't want you to say it looks like it's decreasing on both sides. When we use the words increasing and decreasing when it comes to graphs, it's always in a left to right motion. So as I trace my pen or my pencil, finger, whatever, as I start from here, I'm going up on the, on the, on the paper and I'm going down. So I'm increasing, decreasing. 
And when we talk about the intervals over which we're increasing or decreasing, it's always in terms of the x values. So for increasing, I'm increasing from the left up until I get to this x value of negative 5. So you would say that you are increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 5, and you would use parentheses. Okay, So we use open intervals here, which means both sides are going to have parentheses. Uh, at negative 5, you can't include that point because actually at negative 5, your function is neither increasing nor decreasing. It's at the very top. And then we are decreasing everywhere beyond negative 5. So we would say we're decreasing on the open interval from negative 5 to infinity. Okay, so we've got all of the key information and a quick little sketch for the graph of this particular quadratic function. Now, let's actually put pen to graph and let's see what the picture looks like. And there's a lot that we could have gotten out of this just by finding the vertex at the very beginning. Okay, so our vertex that we just calculated was the ordered pair negative 5, negative 3. So negative 5, negative 3 is right here. And if we imagine that this is acting as my new origin, like so, and we know the basic shape for the quadratic, we know that it's a, a U shape, and we've got this negative here, which means that we're going to be upside down. We could go ahead and just get our graph, right? So we mark this off like we've done before. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is the squaring function. So 1 squared is down 1. 2 squared is going to be down 4. 3 squared is down 9, so we're off the grid. And we can reflect these guys on the other side of your axis of symmetry. A line of symmetry so we can mirror on the other side and they would just draw our nice our nice parabola like this okay now here's something that I think is kind of neat for us so we've seen how we can take this function how we can use completing the square to go from the general form to the vertex form let's cheat that system a little bit. We used algebra and we found out that our vertex was the ordered pair negative 5, negative 3. We can also identify up here that my a value, that leading coefficient, is negative 1. Now we know that for the vertex form your function takes on this appearance, a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And when we were graphing these nonlinear functions, we'd like to be in that form because we can easily tell how we shift left or right from this value, how we shift up or down, and if there's a stretch, compression, or if there's a reflection. Okay. So using the information here, we can now convert this function into vertex form by plugging in the numbers. A is negative 1, so that's negative times x, so minus h is going to be minus negative 5, that makes it plus 5, squared, and then plus k, we write exactly what we see, so we write minus 3. So these guys are the same, you can see they're, they're interchangeable really. And so this is how we go from general to uh, vertex form, at least one way. You also could have taken this guy and completed the square, and it would have been the same thing. All right, there we go.